and welcome to episode 81 of Battlefield 4 News. And this episode is all about Final Stand. It's been previewed today and it turns out that it's going to be available tomorrow on the CTE servers for testing. So Dice LA has been showing off Final Stand to some YouTubers today and the first indication we had that this was going on, apart from a few tweets from people like Jack Frags who said, oh, I'm in LA, was this Battlefield 4 Final Stand splash screen being displayed on a wall monitor. Now this picture quickly got taken down. Today, Dice LA have released this, which is the actual cover for Final Stand. And this appears on a blog which is giving some details of what we can expect. Now this first part of the blog post heavily references Battlefield 2142. And this expansion looks like it's going to be a Battlefield 2142 prequel. It takes place in Russia. It's going to be around military complexes that are designing advanced weaponry. And it's going to have a winter theme. And we get hints at a couple of the weapons we're going to find dotted around these maps. So we've got a battle pickup railgun that fires a single round of kinetic energy. And we have a prototype hover tank, which uses eight experimental jet propulsion engines to move around the battlefield. Now the Battlefield 2142 hover tank used in grav fields and all that kind of stuff to hover, not engines. But this is apparently the prototype for that 2142 tank. Now we knew something was coming today, so that's Tuesday, September the 9th on CTE because we got a bit of a hint last week but it turns out that what is coming are all four of the final stand maps are going to be available to play on CTE as of today. There are going to be a limited number of servers so that's going to limit the number of player slots but it is open to play on CTE. To go with this announcement they're opening up more player slots on the CTE servers now this is still restricted to PC premium accounts so if you're on console or if you haven't bought premium you won't be able to get onto the CTE servers but if you're not already on CTE and you have a premium account you should be able to apply to get on now. If you can't go to the CTE servers then my PC is currently downloading and installing the 14 gig update for final stand so I will be doing some videos on it. Now this 14 gig patch is another one of these patches where you will have to uninstall CTE client and then reinstall the entirety of CTE to get it to work. However for me right now the update server isn't working. I got to about 80% of the update downloading and then it all just stopped. So it may take a while for you to download this fully. And we had a post from Tiggy letting us know what was going on. So these maps are coming out in a pre-release state. They're not really finished. So there's going to be a lot of bug testing on just things like can you shoot through walls or do rocks have extra boundaries around them. The first map we're getting is Operation Whiteout. And if you look on YouTube, you can already see some footage of Operation Whiteout from people like Level Cap and other YouTubers because they've already got to play it. And as you can see from the list of things they want feedback on, these maps are going to be in a pretty raw state. They've never been played on really. So usually DICE play on them with a bunch of their own testers and then they release them onto CTE. This time they're going pretty much straight onto the CTE servers for us to test. And the maps we're going to be getting are Giants of Corella. Hammerhead, Hangar 21 and Operation Whiteout. Now I don't really know much about these maps but we get an idea of what they're going to be like from the trailer that Dice LA has released today. And this is that trailer. Now it's pretty short but it does give you a bit of a feel of what the maps are going to be like and a brief glimpse at some of the gadgets. So Operation Whiteout is a research centre this map definitely has the railgun on it, but it also has a metal storm, 
and here you can see the new hover tank. Now there's always these maps that do have a certain Battlefield 3 feel to them, especially Alborez Mountain from the Armoured Kill expansion. There's a certain look to them. Now I guess it's because it's Russian and it's wintry, but I think you can see what I mean. However, DICE have said there's going to be a lot of room for infantry combat on these maps and there are a lot of indoor sections where the vehicles just aren't going to be able to go. And it looks like those massive hangar doors are going to be open and closable in-game, which should be quite impressive. Now let's have a look at the gadgets and extras we're going to get in this expansion. So first up we're going to have snowmobiles, which I imagine are going to work a bit like dirt bikes where you can have two people on them, one guy shooting off the back. We have the TDD, which is a weapon mounted spotting gadget. We have Metal Storm, which is a stationary weapon, and in real life this thing fires out a hail of projectiles. So I imagine it's going to do something similar in the game. We have the Pod Launcher. Now, not exactly sure what this is, but I think it might be a vehicle mounted grenade launcher, maybe as a secondary weapon. We have the multi-kill vehicle, which is essentially a flying minigun that can hover in the air. We have the hover tank, which is inspired by the hover tanks in 2142. We have the DS3 which is a decoy gadget, very similar to the one that's in Battlefield Hardline. And we have the new Tanto knife. And here we can see the two new gadgets. Now it's not easy to read because I've had to blow it up, so I'll read it out for you. So the DS3, an experimental device designed to hack the enemy communication network. Once active, the DS3 will report false positive infantry signal on the opposing team's minimap. So you put it down and all the enemies and probably the commander as well see it as a player on your team. For the TDD it says a prototype device created using parts from the MTN55 which is a laser sight and TUGS which is the put down motion tracker. While active, it will detect enemy movement within a narrow cone in front of you and report it to your team's minimap. So essentially, a player moving through your laser sight will be automatically spotted. Now I don't know if it's going to be less effective than a normal laser sight, but if you look at the AK-5C stats down there, you can see the difference between having it on and having it off on the hip fire. This is a 3D model of the hover tank and essentially what it is is a tank body and turret stuck on top of a bunch of jet engines. So the jet engines keep it stable over terrain but it doesn't have a turret. What you have to do is slew this thing sideways because it will go sideways and by moving it sideways and turning it you have to aim the turret with the body of the tank. The gun will only fire forwards. And this is pretty much inspired by the hover tank from 2142, which is a more advanced version of the same thing. And next we have the rail gun. Now this is a single shot gun. You have to load each bullet individually into it. And I think you get eight rounds when you pick it up. So this is a battlefield pickup, you can't equip it onto your soldier. And essentially it's an anti-infantry and anti-vehicle weapon. This will do 25 damage to a tank if you hit it in the back. And it does quite a lot of damage to helicopters as well. There's no bullet drop on it and it is an almost instant hit. It has the highest bullet velocity of any weapon in the game. So you pretty much just point and shoot. You don't really have to lead your target. And this is one of the camos that's available in Final Stand. So this gun has got frostbite on it, which is a new winter camo. There is another camo in the DLC, but I don't have an image for that one. And as usual with the DLC, the rank limit has been increased. So now you can go up to rank 140 within final stand. 
which is a bit embarrassing as I am trying to get to rank 100. So I'm quite a long way behind. Now there's bound to be a lot of information coming out about Final Stand over the next few hours and days. We've got the release on CTE and we've got the YouTubers that have been off recording footage over the last couple of days. So we're going to be learning a lot of things that are going to make the information in this video out of date or a bit obsolete. But I wanted to get it out so that if you aren't on CTE and are a premium member, you knew that you could try and get on again now and join in the final stand testing. And also for people that didn't know that final stand was being announced and tested, that they could go and look at the blogs and YouTube channels and keep up to date with final stand. But that's it for this episode of Battlefield 4 News. You can expect a few more episodes over the next couple of weeks and some testing videos showing you more about what's coming in final stand. It's gonna be quite busy, I think. But I hope this quick video gives you some idea of what to expect and thanks for watching.